Who's ready for another episode of Edge of Indy? I know I am. Hey, today we're joined by a team that provides publications, programs, and other opportunities for Indiana citizens of all ages to learn and teach about the history of their communities, the state of Indiana, and their relationship to the nation and the world. That's the Indiana Historical Bureau. We're going to go, then we're going to go straight to the edge again with Paul Poteet. And then, guess what? We're drinking wine. At least Brittany is. Uh, we'll be joining, we'll be, that was like I've already drunk wine, but I haven't. We'll be joined by the <laughs> Vino Mobile Bar, all that and more today on the edge. <laughs> Your audio and video source featuring Indianapolis tech trends, marketing <coughs> industry champions, and business innovation. This is Edge of Indy. Broadcasting from Edge Media Studios. Let's get today's conversation started. Oh, uh, well, uh, see, though, it's, 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 it's a rarity that I actually get through an introduction without bobbling it. So It's my favorite thing when you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, if you haven't uh, joined Edge of Indy Live uh, or on podcast before, let me tell you what this is all about. We're talking to uh, causes and organizations, uh, movers and shakers here in Indianapolis that, that are, 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 are not only raising a stir, but also really dialed in and dedicated to lifting up the local uh, viewpoint and interest of Indiana Indianapolis and Indiana. Uh, we're focused on people and organizations that make Indianapolis and Indiana a great place to work, visit, and live. So we say this on a regular basis, choose local, and choose local often. That's what Edge of Indy is all about. So I wanted to... Uh, First, get that out of the way. If you haven't listened, you better jump in and, and look at some of the older episodes as well. We've been doing it for a good solid year, year and some change, and it's great to be able to have such great guests that are that are dedicated to to indie. So. I want to introduce to you the Historical Marker Program Director, Casey Pfeiffer of the Indiana Historical Bureau. How are you doing? Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you for having us on today. You are more it. than welcome. And Lindsay Beckley, historian uh, of the Indiana, Indiana Historical Is it Society or Bureau? It's Bureau. Bureau. Is, um, <laughs> also, can I play? You cannot play. Uh, this is Brittany Simpson. <laughs> I was trying to keep you from coughing. Thank you. I was You're just like, kind of avoiding it. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like <laughs> Indiana chuck holes, right? Let's, I just got to drive around it. Probably a good idea. <laughs> I'll keep my speech limited today. Uh, well, first and foremost, this is Brittany Simpson, Director of Marketing Services here at, at Site Strategics. And I, I forgot myself. Uh, I'm Aaron Sparks, <laughs> uh, CEO of Site Strategics as well as Edge Media Studios. Now, we have all the members uh, accounted for. How are we doing? He's that excited that he put you all before us. There you go. <laughs> That's what he's See? excited about. Well, I love history. I love Indiana history. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll take a back seat to that any time. Yeah. <laughs> so, ladies, welcome to the show. You're joining us from the Indiana Historical Bureau. Can you tell us what your organization's all about? It's Go ahead, Lindsay. Like you said at the top. Both of, of you can. It's okay. <laughs> Jump ball. So, like you said at the top of the show, we're... Uh, our biggest focus is on historical markers, and that's mostly going to be Casey. Mm -hmm. uh, she's our historical marker manager. And then uh, we also do, from our historical marker research, we try to take that and do the research once and then publish everywhere. That's what we always say. Research once, pu publish everywhere. And we see uh, publishing as being in a variety of different ways. Mm -hmm. We do uh, a podcast. We have a blog. We, uh, Of course, the markers would be a publish, uh -huh. uh, <coughs> publishing of some sort. And then... Um, we also go out and give talks sometimes. We, we have mm -hmm. a lot of different ways that we get the history out to the community. Uh, we look for um, any kind of Indiana history that has a, a statewide effect mm -hmm. and um, or really any kind of Indi Indiana history. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just about uh, getting getting the information about Indiana history and getting people involved in their community history. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, we are a state agency. I know Aaron had oh, mentioned yes. it early on. Um, uh, the Indiana Historical Society is across the street from us. So right. we're right inside the Indiana State Library. Come by, um, visit us. We have extensive marker files, research <laughs> files. If people are interested in uh, digging deeper into a specific thing, uh, we're happy to help. Um, we have a bookshop in there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of uh, when you said a lot of people do confuse with the side with. You don't. You guys don't have like wars, do you? We or, don't. Or, no, no, we, we play a, nice. A friendly rivalry. <laughs> no, you know, you, you mentioned it before. Indy's a great place um, in terms of collaboration between historical groups. Uh, there's so many wonderful organizations who are doing great things, and um, we're happy to be able to partner with them on a variety of projects. Uh, one that's coming up uh, this week is the Hoosier Women at Work Conference. Mm -hmm. I know you guys 
briefly talked about that a couple weeks ago. Um, that is a conference that um, we host with uh, the Indiana State Library, uh, Indiana Division of uh, Natural Resources, um, Department of Historic Preservation and Archaeology. Uh, people from IUPUI are involved. Oh, wow. um, so it is uh, a great conference that's going to be happening here this Friday um, at the uh, Arts, the Harrison Arts Center. Awesome. Um, One of the things your team does really well is it's uh, history communication for non-historians. So yeah. you really take our state's history and make it digestible for people who right. don't have a history mind. Yeah. Like me, <laughs> who's like, <laughs> chrono you know, chronologically, yeah. none of this makes any sense, but in little chunks, perfect sense. So tell us why that's really your approach to, to how you do things, because I think it's something that really, you know, makes you distinctly different yes. than a lot of organizations. Right. So I mean, we try to reach a broad variety of audiences. So with the markers, we'll do extensive research, footnotes, annotations, you know, for the people who are interested in that. Those are available on our website. That material is there. Um, you know, I'm a history nerd. I love the footnotes. Uh, some people... You know, they want to skim over those things. And that's where Lindsay was talking about where, you know, we'll convert that over that work over to a blog post and focus on another issue maybe that we you know couldn't detail mm -hmm. um, on the marker. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the state markers. It's really just a couple sentences on the front and back of a marker. So there's not a ton of space to say. Hmm. Um, every, They're like the plaque things, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So we have over 630 that we've installed going all the way back to 1946. Oh, wow. Um, they are in every county but four right now. But we're going to be getting two markers. Um, you want to shame in, those counties right now? <laughs> <laughs> Call them out. Well, Clinton and Du Bois are doing great, and they're going to get them this year. And then there's the other two. <laughs> then there's other two. But and you know who you are. <laughs> we are looking to uh, get markers in those communities and in those counties uh, in the coming years. And um, that's one of the great things um, that we love about the marker program is the diversity, both geographically. Mm -hmm. um, we get to go to counties and you know all over the state and meet with people and install these markers. And they take such pride in them. Um, it's their history, and yeah. it's great to see them uh, take so much enjoyment out of it. I was up in LaPorte County just on Friday for our first dedication of the season um, commemorating uh, early medical college in Indiana that was uh, open in the 1840s. It was a really pioneering institution, um, and uh, they were just so excited to be there. You know, even though it's 40 degrees outside, you know, people show up to these events, which is great to see. Um, and then also, in, in beyond the geographical um, diversity, we also just have, in terms of diversity of topics, so if you're interested in women's history and sports history, mm -hmm. African-American history, you can find a marker on it, um, which is a really great thing. Again, trying to reach um, people um, of a variety of interests. Uh, and it's fun for us because we always get to research something new. Now, my gears just got going there. So if yeah. you have all these markers yeah. somewhat categorized, mm -hmm. right, and um, I come from a scout background, so we do geocaching all sure, the time, yeah. right? Do you have any type of... Um, maps to certain types of categories and genres. So, I mean, for, for women's history, yeah. do you have markers that you can actually put together a trail and be able to find mm -hmm. uh, different uh, historical areas yeah. around the state? So that's something that we hope to do more of in the oh, future. Cool. If you go on our website, you can search either um, by category. So if it is, you know, if you are interested in women's history, you just want to pull up all the women's history markers, there's a whole list of them. Cool. If you want to search by county and you're saying, hey, you know, we're going on vacation, I want to go through this area, mm -hmm. You can go awesome. and search that awesome. way. So um, there definitely is that, um, you know, those possibilities out there. Lindsay and I actually developed a walking tour of some of our markers in the downtown Indianapolis area last year for uh, in conjunction with the National Council yep. on Public History Conference. Um, so we got to go with about 25 people and walk them around and kind of talk about, do a deep dive into hmm. some of the history behind some of these markers, um, which was a great event. Was the weather nice on that day? You know, it shockingly was. Wow. <laughs> Let's all think back to yeah, that. It's right. not going to happen. <laughs> it was late April, too, so there's still hope. I mean, <laughs> is there? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have to hope. <laughs> well, well, we'll probably listen to Paul Boutique. He's probably yes. going to give a wet blanket, probably a photo frozen wet blanket yeah. on all those aspirations. Um, to, to, to dovetail off of what Brittany was saying is that you're really disseminating uh, historical content in a lot of different ways, especially yeah. embracing <clears throat> new media. Right. So you're, you're podcasters in your own right, like you said, mm -hmm. with talking who's your history. So what topics have you explored on that and what can our viewers actually listen and expect mm -hmm. to, to tune into in the future? Yeah, so um, our most recent episode, usually they drop around the first of the month. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a Saturday or Sunday, we'll drop the, the nearest Monday. Um, but 
our, our last episode that we just dropped is uh, called Reaching Towards Peace. It's about um, Robert Kennedy's speech in Indianapolis mm -hmm. uh, when he, he was remarking on uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, death. And um, so that's that's our most recent one. And uh, we have them on everything from Abraham Lincoln living in Indiana to um, poet Kenneth Rex Roth in Indiana. Hmm. We have we try to cover a diverse uh, range of topics. We have one on the Senate Avenue YMCA here in Indianapolis. Hmm. Um, so we try to we try to do uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, try to be inclusive, just like we do with the marker program. Mm -hmm. So like I said, we do about uh, the first of every month. Uh, we are on a little hiatus right now. We're going to take a couple months off, regroup. Uh, it's really, hard. It's really hard to keep up. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. And we only do it monthly. So I can't imagine doing it weekly. Yeah, it's a bit of a gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at, for our uh, uh, watchers at home, uh, you want to make sure you ha check out the uh, soundcloud.com forward slash talking Hoosier history. And I just uh, relayed that to our audio listeners as well. Cool. Twofer right there. <laughs> so check that out. And we really appreciate what you're doing because it's it's you're you're, you're getting out of the well uh, blazed path of just the academic space. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're really capitalizing on how to reach yeah. your audience in where there. They, where they where are. They where are. They are. Right. Yes, going to meet them where they are. Yeah, that's very important to us. Mm -hmm. uh, trying not to just stay in the same, I wouldn't say rut because that sounds like a bad Call thing. Call lane. But yes, yeah, <laughs> staying in our same lane that we've been in. We've been around for over 100 years now. Yeah. So we You've don't been wanna... podcasting for 100 years? Wow, you look <laughs> great. You don't look <laughs> a day <laughs> over. Pioneering <laughs> yeah. podcast. You've got great skincare then. That's great. <laughs> That's great. As far as the blog goes, that's the Indiana History blog, and mm -hmm. that's where you've you've posted like a myriad of topics ranging from the inventor of the television to Johnny Appleseed. Yeah, the inventor of television lived in Indiana. Yeah, he actually developed the first television television set here in Indiana. Hmm. Well, God bless. Him. He's not from Indiana though. Okay, well he was just but, here when he did you it. Know, we'll claim inspiration. We'll claim inspiration exactly. comes from yes. Indiana. <laughs> so. With that kind of content, who's in charge of that? And, like, are you ever taking submissions from people in the community? Like, would you be open to blogging on XYZ topic? Or mm -hmm. could you tell us more about whatever? Like, what is that process like? Because it sounds really interesting. And if you're covering that kind of range, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's pretty um, diverse. I mean, with our staff, uh, we're very fortunate that everyone, you know, has their own interests and stuff. So um, a lot of times, um, you know, whether it's Lindsay's done a podcast or um, we've done a marker, whoever maybe is in the agency who's done that will then do uh, the blog on that. But we are definitely open to um, guest bloggers. We really encourage people to um, submit, you know, topics. And uh, Nicole Politica, who's in our office, kind of, um, is the one in charge of that, and uh, we'll work with guest bloggers. So. How big is your team? Just curious. We are very small. We have five uh, staff oh. members. <laughs> so well, there's a lot of history to cover uh, between us, but uh, we're a great team and uh, like to work together. So. Cool. So I mean, you're 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 getting this content, uh, and you're probably as you've been disseminating this over over months and years. Yeah. You're you're finding a brand new audience mm -hmm. that needs to really, I mean. What we're realizing is the millennial generation is wanting to be able to plug in, mm -hmm. and they're wanting to understand their roots mm -hmm. more and more. Mm -hmm. And there's been a bit of a gap of information, and uh, it's it's not to any anybody's um, uh, 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 delivery. It's literally that media has taken us so far away from what's happening right at your in, yeah. in your front yard. Right. Right. And so you're you're trying to bridge that gap. Have you been able to see a a new response from those that, that new media audience and picking up and actually in and seeing uh, if in the individuals are inspired to actually kind of follow in your footsteps? Have you been able to to uh, lay some new trails for individuals? Yeah, I, I think we have been. Uh, we've been active on Facebook for quite a long time, mm -hmm. uh, but I've recently been told by a high schooler that uh, Facebook is where you go to keep in touch with your grandparents. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> she, she said, no, we, Ouch. Need, we need to be uh, more on Twitter. So we've been active on Twitter for a while as well. So we're really, we're trying to beef that up a little bit yeah. now that I know we're only reaching grandparents. Apparently. We're very sorry for all the Facebook uh, audience. <laughs> Not the grandparents don't. <laughs> matter Grand we love grandparents <laughs> hashtag all grandparents yeah. <laughs> well we just did recently too um kind of piggybacking off march madness we did a marker madness where we um 
kind of put potential marker topics against one another and had people vote on Facebook and Twitter of what they would like to see. Uh, you know, we have a lengthy wish list of topics that uh, we would love to see become markers. People say that to us all the time, like, how can you not have a marker to this you know, popular topic? And um, the market program is public driven. So we accept applications huh. from the public each year. We're actually in the middle of an application cycle right now. So people have until June 22nd to apply. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's out there and is interested, uh, feel free to send us an email um, if you have any questions. But um, yeah, so, you know, if there is a topic out there that you say, why isn't it commemorated? That, that's pretty much why. Uh, but it was great to see hmm. the response uh, for Marker Madness. And um, again, just looking at uh, the wide array of topics that we had, um, we're really excited to do it again in future years. If um, someone has a nomination for a marker and it works out <coughs> and it's made and it's there, yeah. is there like do, is it credited to them? Is there a name yeah. on something or something? Like I'm trying to appeal to the egos out yeah, there. No, like, <laughs> for sure. So that's a great question. So at the um, bottom of the marker on the second side, we always have a credit line. Oh, so cool. um, we encourage people to work with, uh, you know, to try to collaborate, work with a variety of organizations. That way, well, it helps cut back on costs, um, but then there's also, you know, more community buy-in and support. Instead of just um, like, this was Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's a problem with that. Good job, right? Sarah. You know what? <laughs> um, but yeah, so they there is, uh, you know, they are featured on the credit line. And then on our website, you know, I was talking about the markers before. We mm -hmm. have a page for every single marker that we've installed. And uh, that credit line appears there as well. So if oh, people cool. are just looking online, they'll see their name as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so are there any uh, upcoming marker dedication ceremonies across the state? Yeah. So we have one. We're pretty excited. Um, April 19th, we're going to be dedicating a marker to a uh, Syrian immigrant community in Terre Haute. Hmm. Um, you know, Syrian immigration is such a big topic in the news today. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that uh, Syrian immigration was happening long, long ago. So this commemorates um, a community that was established in Terre Haute a uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, mm -hmm. um, you know, really uh, adding to the cultural diversity of the state. And that's something that we try to do, too, really looking at um, several immigrant groups that made Indiana what it is. Right. Um, we dedicated a marker last year to German immigration in the state, and we kind of did it in conjunction with um, World War I. Uh, the centennial of World War One. Um, so it looked at the demise of German language newspapers in the state as a result of um, animosities during the war. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, that that marker for um, it's entitled "Little Siri on the Wabash." It will be dedicated April nineteenth. Uh, we have another marker here in Indianapolis. Uh, I believe it's the 24th, I think they just uh, set the date, for a World War One Aviation Repair Depot. Uh, a lot of people, you know, know of the Speedway because of the 500 and automobiles, um, but we've had a couple of markers now that really look at um, aviation history in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're really excited for that one. Um, we have a couple coming up in June for uh, Evangeline Harris Merriweather. She was an early African-American educator. Um, I think we'll be doing one uh, this summer. Lindsay's working on one for a magician, uh, actually. So what? Lester yeah. Lake. Yeah, Lester Lake. He's a very interesting fellow. Uh, I I haven't been able to look at my research for that for a little bit, but he uh, he was an inventor of, of tricks mm -hmm. more than anything. He mm -hmm. invented over 300 magic tricks in oh, his wow. uh, in his career. Wow. And probably the one that you're most familiar with is the uh, the stage guillotine. Yep. So, yes, anytime you've seen anybody get their, their head cut off <laughs> in a uh, magic act, that's all. <laughs> Thank you for qualifying <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 Yes, he's he's in a safe setting. Yeah. He, he's the one that terrifies one. children. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, awesome. that's another example of just, um, you know, the fun that we can have with topics. You know, I think some people think, oh, history is boring. It's not fun. But that's, you know, definitely not the case. There's so many interesting stories out there. Mm -hmm. So many wonderful uh, things in Indiana history. And we're really excited to be able to have the opportunity to commemorate them and to work with people. On them. I do think that's so important because, like you said, when I think of history, I think of like third grade when you're learning mm -hmm. like the textbook. Like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. blah. And, right. Like, that's not that doesn't need to be how history is yeah. communicated anymore, especially with what I feel like is a new generation and a new yeah. way of research and information gathering and all of that. I, th I think it's really important to break it down to like, you know, stories about people and what mm -hmm. they've done and really making it more fun. I yeah. Know. Yeah. I, you know, know. I don't think anybody gets excited <laughs> over names and dates, it's just a list of names and dates. And uh when you say that you're from the Historical Bureau and people say, oh, I'm not into history, I, I could never remember all the names and dates, 
that's I can't remember the names and dates either. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. Names more than dates, but right. um, but really we're we're all about the stories, like you said. It's it's taking taking that name and putting something behind it that makes mm-hmm. you feel something about it. Mm-hmm. You're not going to remember it, and you're not going to care about it unless you connect it with a feeling, or or unless you connect it to your own life. Yeah, have way. it apply to yeah. something. Yeah, sure. It's 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 very important to understand context, and right. and you can glaze over. And, and, and in school, we've always had a, a, a kind of a barrier of entry into into scholastics on on history because it was kind of shoved at us. But if you actually unpack a particular era or a particular period of time, and you find out what people were doing to really not just make a name for themselves, but be able to invest in. Indiana, Indiana, and mm-hmm. Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Then you, then you find that you're you're hearing somebody's passion to give back. Yeah, that's a whole different way mm-hmm. to uh, perceive it, and then, whole different ball game. A yeah. whole different ball game, <laughs> and you start understanding. Um, you know, we're part of history as well. Exactly. Our our tagline for the podcast is. Uh, Exploring the people and uh, sorry, the people and events that shape the Hoosier State. Mm-hmm. So, and that's really how we look at it: is, is, is. these people and, and these places that we're covering uh, made us and our state what and who we are today. Bam! That's great. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. <laughs> So, uh, in as much as as uh, local uh, businesses and local causes try to raise awareness. Um, we need to know where we've come from mm-hmm. and exactly. and really be able to lift up those whose shoulders we're standing on because we're not here. Mm-hmm. We just haven't been dropped in here. There's a lot of building and a lot of care and a lot of, a lot of uh, people that have sacrificed a heck of a lot to be able to have the city that we have. Oh, yes. Yeah, and, and, it, and the more you know about it, the more you'll want to learn about it, mm-hmm. and the more you know about it, the more you'll be invested in what you're doing to, uh, to do the same thing for future generations. No, I dig it. I dig it. Do you have any parting thoughts for anyone watching or listening who might have, like, a history interest but don't, don't know where to plug in or don't know which organizations to reach out to, or why sure. should they plug in with you all? Yeah, well, I um, mean, beyond, you know, what we were saying with the market program in terms of diversity of topics, you know, also, if you're just interested, you know, maybe you want to go back into actual source material. We, uh, in conjunction with the Indiana State Library, also oversee Hoosier State Chronicles, which is a newspaper digitization program. Mm-hmm. We have close to a million pages of newspapers digitized. Hoosier State Chronicles is a free resource. So if people are interested in kind of getting into research, it's a great, great hmm. tool. I would really encourage them to. And what a wealth of information. You know, if people are interested in their genealogy, it's amazing some of the things that you can find. Uh, yeah, we that's had, really big right now, too, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it's keyword, keyword searchable, so you can just plug your name in it and or, you know, one mm-hmm. of your ancestors' names in it yeah. and see where all they're showing up in Indiana newspapers. Yeah, we had a volunteer who was in, and he was working on some projects in his free time. He just plugged his name in, and he was like, oh, my gosh, it's amazing some of the things that have popped up. Like, just, you know, from when he was growing up, his name would appear in the news. Newspaper and <laughs> or his family names and stuff. So um, that's a great resource. Uh, but you know, like I said, in terms of you know, searching marker topics, mm-hmm. there's so much extra information out there. The blog is a wonderful resource, and Lindsay's done a great job with talking Hoosier history. There's just so many uh, great podcasts. It's uh, so nice. You episodes. don't have to get like a magnifying glass out anymore and like look at old <laughs> things. And, like, <laughs> well, I still love that, up. but no, I know, <laughs> yeah. but I do. Yeah. For the people that don't and exactly. still want to learn, mm-hmm. it's nice that they have that new that new yeah. venue to do that too. Very cool. Absolutely. So we want to make sure our listeners and our watchers know where to find the Indiana Historical Bureau on Facebook, forward slash Indiana Historical Bureau on Facebook as well, Talking Mm -hmm. Hoosier, H-I-S-T for history. Uh, On Twitter, I-N underscore Bureau, as well as at Talk Hoosier Hist. Um, You've got the blog out there, blog.history.in.gov, right? Which is fantastic. And on soundcloud.com t- forward slash talking Hoosier history. Uh, this is a great example of an organization that's really grabbing a hold of new media and getting the word out because you've like like Brittany said, you gotta meet them where they are mm-hmm. and you're you're nuggetizing this information so it's no no longer a, a, a difficult thing to get on board, mm-hmm. right? So find find out where you are in uh, in understanding who's your history, and and, and oh my gosh, she's getting emotional. Oh, 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 Clem. I know. Gosh, pull <laughs> it's, it together. It's really really important that you can you as listeners and watchers to be able to find out what what you should know about. Everywhere, uh, who, who's invested, who has been invested in Indiana and Indianapolis. So thank you so much. You're doing a great job. Uh, any any final words that you want to give to our audience? 
I'll take it. Yeah. Can, can we get a plaque for him saying the word nuggetize? <laughs> nuggetize. <laughs> where, where the phrase nuggetize was coined. <laughs> it's right here. Well, if you're looking at Indianapolis, we have uh, some, I think it's 80 markers here in Marion County alone. So uh, Now we have 81. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So with that, we want to make sure that you stay around because another nugget of, of questionable values coming up with Paul Petit and the Edge. And we're also going to drink some wine. So stay tuned and see what happens to Brittany right after this.